A COP29, that's the UN Climate Change Summit, caps a year of deadly weather events, especially right here in this region. Experts say it's a clear sign of worse to come as global warming intensifies. Li Ling Tan reports from Singapore. March was when the mercury started rising dramatically across India, topping 50 degrees Celsius in some parts of the country. By June, there were more than 40,000 suspected heat stroke cases. By September, an estimate of more than 700 people had died. We had the most extended period of heat wave. And signs are pointing to more of those ahead. It's got public policy expert Chandra Bhushan working on solutions to improve disaster response and help people adapt. We need to protect ourselves from extreme heat, heat wave. But on the other hand, we also need to start talking about providing sustainable cooling solutions, which is affordable to everyone, even the poor. He says India needs about $1.2 trillion this decade to adapt to climate change, but it must also green the economy and reduce emissions in 25 years. There will be some investment that will be required, but the situation where the temperature will become so high that it will be unbearable for humans to survive, it will be impossible for humans to survive, will only happen if we continue emitting greenhouse gases at the rate we are doing today. And it might not take much to tip that scale. Associate Professor Jason Lee is a well-known authority on the impact of heat on health and productivity. He says we don't need a 5 or 10 degree jump in temperature for things to go very badly. We're already almost there. The best analogy would be when you have a full cup, another drip can tip and overflow the cup. Or a small snowball can trigger an avalanche. You know? So we are near that threshold, so we don't need to have huge magnitude of change. Uh, incremental small change could potentially induce irreversible damages. The United Nations says Asia has been warming at a faster rate than the global average, and the trend is likely to continue, meaning more intense heat waves ahead. But there's hope. We don't need groundbreaking findings to save lives. There are solutions that have been proven to reduce heat strain. We just need to adapt and apply correctly. Having said that, with modern technologies, artificial intelligence, data science, wearables, right, it is our aspiration to harness on those to pick up the last men or women who are under heat stress. Because heat stress or succumbing to heat stress is totally preventable and no one should die of extreme heat. There are other extremes as well. Scientists say climate change is leading to more floods, typhoons and landslides, costing lives and crippling economies in what is already the world's worst disaster affected region. Just this past September, Typhoon Yagi tore through the region, leaving more than 840 people dead and $16.5 billion in damages. Vietnam was hit especially hard. Dr. Mai Trong Nguyen, Vice Chairman of the Vietnam Policy Advisory Council on Climate Change, worries that the impact will only get worse. Biến đổi hiệu các cái hiện tượng cực đoan như đã nói ở phần trước đó là tăng lên cả về tần suất cả về cường độ và đặc biệt là tăng cái tính bất định, tính đoán định rất khó, cường độ và mức độ tác động nó vượt cái khả năng chống chịu tự nhiên và đặc biệt là vượt cả khả năng chống chịu xã hội bao gồm cả cả nền kinh tế, cơ sở hạ tầng và năng lực của người dân. The outlook is gloomy. Climate change is expected to influence the approaching El Nino weather system and that could bring wetter than normal conditions to a region that's already bracing for the year-end northeast monsoon season. It's a reminder of what's at stake for countries here on the front lines of the climate battle whose fates now lie in the hands of negotiators and decision makers in Azerbaijan. Li Ling Tan, CNA, Singapore.